you made a hundred dollar payment to Visa, you didn't get any of that money back. When you make a hundred dollar payment back to your policy as a loan repayment to replenish the debt benefit that you borrowed, you get all that money back. Every penny of it. That loan was part of my debt benefit, collateralized by the hundred dollars that's still in my account earning interest and dividends. They will give you part of your death benefit while you're living, up to the amount of cash value you have in your account. Literally, like you could save money and spend money at the same time. That whole life promises to pay a death benefit when you die. This will change your future family's life so that you never have to worry about how you're going to afford to live. This is so you never have to worry about where money's going to come from to buy gifts for those grandkids. So why do we really do this? Love. Truly. Welcome everybody to another week, another wealth webinar. Stephen and I are really excited about today's. We're gonna we're gonna cover a lot of ground, but we're really gonna bring it to a fifth grade level. So, you know, any of you that are like, you know, oh my God, that's so complicated with that complex trust structure. What we're gonna hit today is quite simple, and it all revolves around love. <laughs> I know that's crazy to say that, but it does. You know, it, it, the theme of today's wealth webinar. You know, we kind of had it figured out, but this morning. On the drive to work, you know, there's it's no surprise. I'm a huge Beatles fan, and I listen to a lot of Beatles songs. And, and there's this one station, this guy came on, and he's talking about a song that the Beatles did. And he's saying, this is the greatest love song of all time, ever written in the last 100 years. And they were talking about a Beatles song. And then he went on and he said, but the funny part about this song is there's nowhere in the song where the lyrics say, I love you. And it made me really think about this. You know, I, I looked not very far in my family and there's certain people in my family that try to buy love, you know, with gifts. I'm not going to make names, but like, think about your situation, folks. How many, you know, grandparents or people maybe that you know that literally like when they're trying to get a child to love them, they bring them gifts all the time. Oh, I got you a present. I brought you this. Oh my God, look at this. To me, <clears throat> like, listen, the child loves that, but then that toy eventually goes in a toy box. And is that how you earn love? Because I don't think it is. And it was right in what I just said. You earn love. You don't buy love. You don't pay somebody to love you. And it, well, I'm not saying you can't. I mean, there's all sorts of dating sites out there that you can just pay somebody to pretend like they love you and, I don't know, give it a six months, a year. If you make it five years, good. And then, you know, they divorce you and take half of what you got. But I mean, hey, you're just paying for love there. I really, truly feel love is earned. And I think love is earned by showing it in our actions and what we do. And I wanted to really, let me, let me share this song just because I think it kicks this off. And this isn't the song they were talking about, but I think it's a, it's a good one for all of you to hear. So we'll just play a couple seconds of it. So not that that means anything. It just says love a lot. That's not the song. With what we do, we teach all of you how to take back control of your money. It's very simple. When people say, you know, what is it that you do? Well, I teach you how to take back control of your money. And I do that by teaching you how to be the bank. And, how, and then when you get into it, we teach what's called the infinite banking concepts. It's a concept that was pioneered by the late R. Nelson Nash. Now, he wasn't the founder of this. He just, he just coined it. He basically put a structure around it, and he brought it to the world, to the middle class. It's always been around in the, in the wealthy. I did another video on YouTube that literally goes back. We, we asked ChatGPT you know, how many people use whole life to create wealth, protect wealth, and it, it gave us a ton of famous names. And we did a whole video with what ChatGPT said were all these people, and they were all the wealthiest families throughout history. So this is nothing new, folks. The infinite banking concept, using whole life insurance as the machine to run your money through, it's been, my gosh, used back to the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, the Morgans, the Stanleys. I mean, you hear me say this a lot, but if you're brand new, as a matter of fact, let's pause. How many of you are on here for the very first time? Put new in the chat or put I in the chat. I just want to take a gauge because sometimes when we do this, we can go really fast into it or I can kind of, you know, explain it. So, okay, so we got a bunch of new people and this is awesome, folks. Everybody else that's been around this campfire for a while, put your hands together, you know, put, put your hands together and give a clap for all the new folks every single week. We are adding anywhere between 10 and 50 new people on this wealth webinar. And, and for those of you that don't know, and any of you that are new, this is not a new webinar. Kind of like the infinite banking concept is not new in love. Well, 
that's been around since the beginning of time. So none of these things are new. This webinar was started many, many years ago. We set out to do a weekly webinar at the exact same time every single week without any distra distractions. If I was traveling, we did it. If somebody else had to do it, we did it. We stayed committed to it. And we have effectively, I don't even know how many episodes we've done, but I mean, I don't know, about six years, if I'm not mistaken, probably six years worth every single week. So do the math. It's a lot of webinars. In that, what we've done is built a tribe. We've built a community. We call it the campfire. And every week we allow new folks to come around this campfire and learn about what it is we teach. But what we teach is something that's been around for a long time. In taking back control of your money and learning the infinite banking concepts in which we use a specially designed and engineered whole life policy to run money through it, which I'll explain why in just a moment, there's one thing that I feel awful about that we miss every single week. And it is single-handedly, I think, one of the most important things. And folks, some of you that were here early, you noticed my daughter was running around. She was drawn on the board. She's three years old now. You know, we missed that piece. We missed why we really do this. Like, why do we teach you how to be in control of your money? Why do we teach you how to be the bank? And what is all this for? Now, some of you would say, oh, I just want to learn how to get all the money back for all my cars. Great. Okay. Some of you are like, I want to pay my debt off in a fraction of the time without working harder, longer, or taking on any risk. Great. Some of you are like, I want to use this to, to buy real estate and lend on real estate because I want to make money twice instead of once on the same dollar. Great. But what is it all for? Who is it for? Why are you doing this? Why are you here? Think about that. Now, I, I know I kind of told you why you think you're here, but really, isn't it to create a legacy? Isn't it to create a better life for your children, for your family? A better life, yes, is a life without debt. A better life is, yes, when you're paying the monthly payments that you used to give away to everybody else, you're paying them back to your own private banking system, your family banking system. That's making a better life for your family. Yeah, when, when you buy a car and you know, like at the end of the term, you're going to get all the money back for that car and actually probably more than just what you paid for the car because you took back control. But what if, what if we took everything that we use in our life and all we did is we taught our children this? What if we taught the people we love this, if they'll listen? And I, I often know, uh, it's in my family too, there's not one person, eh, this is gonna sound crazy, Stephen, I'd love to hear it from you, but there's not one person in my family that applies and uses what I teach to tens, if uh, probably hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people. Not one person in my family, except for my wife and well, my daughter, but she's a bit young still. Not one. Now, doesn't that sound weird? Is it because I'm selfish and I don't want my family to, to learn this? No, I've absolutely tried. I've tried talking to my, my parents. Okay. I've tried, I tried explaining to my mom. She's like, Oh, I I'm too dumb to understand this stuff. You can just do it for me. I'm like, yeah, okay, mom. You know, I've tried teaching Larissa's family more than probably anything else. Cause like, you know, I see them a lot and they're like, Oh yeah, I've had them watch the video. Do you think I'd even watch the 90 minute video? Nope. But yeah, and then they come to me and they say, Hey, uh, we're buying a car. Can you show me that thing? I'm like, did you watch the stupid video I gave you a year ago? How about you watch that? You know, it, it, people don't respect your time. And you know who doesn't respect your time? Your family members, the people closest to you, because they think you should just go out of your way and just give, give, give to them. And, and we should, but there's a responsibility on their part. So back to it. What if we just taught just our children this? Because our kids will, for the most part, listen to this. And if they won't listen to it at the beginning, try just solving a problem with them. Because kids, there's one thing I know for certain, even at three years old, I've learned this. They always want something, don't they? There's always something that they want. As your child gets older, they want a car. Then maybe they want help with a house. Maybe they want to start a business. You know, maybe they want to start a lemonade stand. So what if all we did is when they wanted something, we just said, sure, you can have that. But first, I got to teach you how you can earn that. And then you show them how to be the bank. And you say, listen, we can open this, this ice cream stand. It's going to cost about $500 in materials. I will lend you the $500 and out of your proceeds, you will pay me back interest on the money that I lent you. And when you, when you have enough, you can pay me all the money back the $500. And then everything you make is pure profit. Like what if you taught them that? And then you explain the other side on how I'm being the bank. And then, then you say, sweetie, that money that I'm lending you, do you know where that comes from? 
It comes from our private banking system that we created. It's not that bank down in the corner. This is our own family banking system. And someday, sweetie, you'll run this. You'll, you'll be in charge of this. So I'm trying to teach you how to use this and how to do this the right way. Just think about that. Why would you do that? Because you love your children. And if you don't, well, then you shouldn't be on today's training. That's plain and simple. You love your children. So because we love, we need to show them how we love them by teaching them how to be better, how to, how to do better, and everything that we learn. Because if we don't, that is selfish. If we don't teach our children to pray, that is selfish. If we don't teach our children all the things that we love, that is selfish. So why do we really do this? Love. Truly. We, we love our children. We love the people that we teach this to. And I truly think that is the sole purpose of this. So for the first time, I think in any training that I've done, I really want to take a little bit of time and then tell you a story because I've been doing this 20 years, 20 years, which means in 20 years, I've had the, the I don't know what you say, the, the, the honor, I think is, is a very proper word. So we're just going to go with that. The honor of delivering death benefits to families. Now, how is that an honor? Somebody dies. That's not an honor. Well, actually it is because at that moment, when someone passes away, when they had a whole life policy or they had a life insurance contract, there's a death benefit paid out tax-free. And I will tell you that there's a lot of spouses that I've delivered these death benefit checks to that didn't even know that their significant other took care of this, to have this so that their family could be taken care of after they're long gone. That is literally, to me, one of the highest levels of love. There's one particular situation I want to talk about. His name was Bob. Very early in my career, which would have been around 2004, this gentleman who was an engineer, his name was Bob. His, his wife's name was Elizabeth. She's still alive. Bob gave me a chance. He had a, a good sum of money, and he, he basically gave me a chance to manage a very small amount of it. So that small amount, as you can all imagine, I did well with. I really took it serious. I did my best. I listened to him because he was an engineer. So he had a lot of good, good ideas. So I didn't come in telling him everything he should do. He, he and I discussed his needs and goals. And, and together, we decided on what we were going to do. And his wealth grew. And I remember he started talking about that day that no one wants to talk about, that day when we go on to a better place. I like to call it graduation day. He started talking about that at every meeting. I just wanted to talk about the stocks, the mutual funds, the bonds, everything we were buying in his portfolio and how well we were doing. He then changed and he wanted to talk about, let's talk about how Elizabeth is going to be protected when I'm no longer here. Now, what I didn't know is he knew something I didn't and he was sick. Now, he never let me know this until the very end when he sat me down. And I knew at that point because he was very frail. But we, we put a lot of life insurance in place. But we didn't just put life insurance in place. We put some, some rules of engagement behind the assets that we were managing for him so that if he went and when he went, his wife would never have to work a day in her life. She'd never have to worry about how to pay the mortgage, how to pay the utility. She'd never have to worry about anything. So that day did come. And I knew it was coming because I knew he was very frail. But I got the call. I got the call from his, his daughter. And she said, you know, Chris, I, I'm sure maybe you heard in the paper, but Bob passed away and she was a mess. And I remember I did the death claim. I submitted it within a few days. I had a check. Now, back in those days, the checks came to the agent to deliver to the family because that was just the way we did things at that company. It was a very ethical, honorable thing to do. And I drove over there and I delivered this check, which was sizable, hundreds of thousands of dollars to Elizabeth. She had no idea what she was getting. She knew about the assets. She had no idea what she was getting. And, and I, I handed it to her and she says, what is this? And I said, this is so that you never have to worry about how you're going to afford to live. This is so you never have to worry about where money's going to come from to buy gifts for those grandkids. This is what Bob set up so that you can live the rest of your life without any financial worries ever. And then we actually had things put in place so that every month she just got a check. And every year that check went up. I tell you that story. It was, it was a hard one. And I used to cry when I told it, but I've done it a lot now. So I tell that story because I want you to understand, yes, it's important to take back control of your money. And in there, I might have even lost some attendees on this because they're like, oh, get to the point. I am at the point. I'm at the most important point. Because if you don't understand what that is that I just explained, 
I don't want to help you take back control of your money. My whole team has no business helping you take back control and becoming the bank because you lack the fundamental thing that I just think everybody needs to have to do this. And that's love. So the death benefit, the life insurance that you will pay for if you end up doing this and using one of these whole life policies someday, although you will be gone, will change your future family's life. Now, you might not even know the changes in the butterfly effect that future family benefits from. Let me go one step further. Let's just say you went a little bit further, like that video I was showing you with the trust. Let's just say you set up a policy and that policy paid a death benefit, but it went to a trust. And in that trust, you set it up so that the money in the trust was to be used so that every year, any child that was born into the family, any child, every birthday, that trust was to send out a check. And there, there's an administrator of a trust. that, And it could be an attorney or anybody, but a check gets sent out. So anytime a new child is born in anywhere in your family line, your immediate family line, on their birthday, they get a check. Doesn't have to be a big one. Let's just call it a thousand bucks or 500 bucks, whatever, just a check. And on the bottom of that check, it says, happy birthday from grandpa, fill in the blank, your name. And let's just say you've been gone 20 years. Grandchildren, great, great, great grandchildren that you would have never known you've been long gone, get a check with your name saying happy birthday. What kind of legacy is that? How would you be remembered? And it doesn't even have to just be a check, but that trust could then be invested by the family, the collaborative, the, the money. See, here's the mistakes families make. They go about setting up all this planning so that someday when they die, there's, there's this money that passes on to the family. But I think you all know the end of that story, right? When, you know, grandpa or, or you know, because we're, we're in the, the largest wealth transfer in history. It's already happening, but it's about to get really happening. Okay, it's the great tsunami, the, 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 the white tsunami, they call it. Baby boomers are going to start dying. Sorry, it's a fact of life. It's just something that happens. And as that happens, the baby boomers and the silent generation are the two wealthiest generations in history. So literally hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars are going to transfer hands. But the question I always ask is when that money transfers to this generation now, my generation, Okay, the, the generations that came after me, like millennials and other generations, are they going to know how to handle this money? Are they going to know how to make that money work for them? Are they going to know the truth about money, how to be in control of it? Or is that money just going to be handed to them and they're kind of just expecting it, the inheritance? Okay, and they just expect the money that, you know, when the, the grandpa dies and like, ah, grandpa's gone, but how much do I get? And they get this money. I've seen this happen firsthand and it, burn, it grinds my gears if you've ever watched that family <laughs> Family guy got that this morning, but where they get this money and what do they, what do they do? Blow it. They blow it. Why do they blow it? Well, because maybe they're younger and they just don't understand it. Maybe they've never been taught how money really works. That Maybe they've never even been taught how to balance a checkbook. The same thing that happens with professional athletes, same thing that happens with people that get, you know, lawsuits, the money's gone. They go buy the big truck, the big truck that they can't afford, but they don't care about the fact that they can't afford it. They just have the money. So they just blow it. And then what are they doing a year later, two years later, blaming everybody else for why they're broke? Is that what you want? Because that's not what I want. And I hope you're here today to learn how that never has to be the ending to your story. Because you get to write your own story, folks. You've literally got a blank canvas right here, right now, no matter where you're at, no matter how bad off you are or how well off you are, you have a blank canvas. You get to create the ending to your story, to your book, to your chapter, whatever you want to call it. So grab a pen and start writing the end because it's always better to start at the end than to start at the beginning. Because if you understand the end, the beginning becomes really easy. Does that make sense? One of the honors that Stephen, myself, and our, our entire team has is working with lots of you and working with you to teach you a specific concept called the infinite banking concept. Very simple concept. All it does is it changes who's in control of the money. And it really allows you to take back the banking functions. I'll give you an example. You make $100. Where does that $100 go? Most people in this country take that $100 and they pay debts with it. They pay expenses with it. And at the end of that, there might not be $100. Maybe there's $10 left. I mean, that is some people's realities. The infinite banking concept is a process 
of literally taking back all that money. So if you start with $100 and you then you end with $100. So if we start with the end, that is I want to keep this $100 that I just made. Well, great. What we have to do is step by step, process by process, we have to eliminate all the people that take that money from me. And you know who one of them is? The IRS. Stephen talks about this all the time, don't you, Stephen? One of the destroyers of wealth. What is it? Oh, yeah, taxes. And? Erodes wealth. Wealth killers. Volatility, taxes, inflation, and at the end of the day, interest. When you actually calculate and add up how much interest you pay in the course of your lifetime, whether it's a mortgage, auto loans, credit cards, it's it's mind blowing. So those four things really erode and, and just kill wealth. You know, and, and some of you, when you're thinking about that, you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, how could I, how could I stop paying my bills? I didn't say stop paying the bills because your expenses are always going to be there. You're going to probably always have some household expenses, diapers, groceries, repairs, maintenance, and things like that. But but what if the things like those credit card payments you make, the interest specifically that you're paying to the credit card companies month over month because you don't pay it off every month, you have a carryover balance, or the car loans, or the boat loans, or the home equity lines of credit that aren't being used properly because we do show you how to uh, use the infinite banking concept and be your bank using HELOCs. But what if that $100 you earned stayed in your family? And what if that $100 you earned never stopped earning interest? Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, imagine this hundred dollars. I've got it. Just I'm just gonna hold it right here. Okay, this hundred dollars. Now imagine if I uh, I lend this hundred dollars to Stephen. Okay, there, here you go, Stephen. He's not looking, otherwise he would have taken it. There he goes. He, he takes the hundred dollars. How much money do I have left? I just lent a hundred dollars to Stephen. How one much time. money do I have left? One more time. Oh, one more time. Let me grab it. One more time. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. Go. Right, it. Oh, thank you. There you go. See, see how that works. <laughs> So Steven's got my hundred bucks. Now, how much do I have left? Now, Freddie's been around the bank or the, around the campfire for a little while, but some of you new folks and some of you, you know, even that have been here for a little bit, you're still in your mind. You're thinking, oh, damn, I, I know this is wrong, but zero, you had a hundred, Chris, and you, you gave it to Steven and he took it and you have zero, right? No. If you changed where the money went first and you applied this process, you still have a hundred dollars working for you. So you still have $100 earning interest and dividends. We call that uninterrupted compound interest. Isn't that cool? Just if that's the only thing you learned how to do is have your money never leave your family for the rest of your life and earn interest on an uninterrupted uninter compounding basis for forever. Literally, like you could save money and spend money at the same time without interrupting anything. So if we knew how to do that, we would first off know how to get rid of like that interest issue. We'd also know how to at least pace inflation in normal times, okay? Because we, we keep pace with inflation just by doing that because our money never stopped earning. And as long as our money's earning about what inflation is, then that's great. But you see, that's really the beginning of the story because that's cool. And one of the other things that erodes wealth is like as this $100 continues to earn year over year uninterrupted, all that earnings that it makes, which would be sizable over time, even on $100, what if all that earnings, that interest and those dividends that you compounded, what if I was all tax free? So what have we eliminated? Well, we've, we've mitigated, not eliminated the inflation risk. We've mitigated or kind of eliminated the tax risk to your money because we found a way to make it work for you without any of those. So then we got a couple other things. Well, now the interest risk, right? So now remember I said that money can stay here or I can, I can give it to Steven. And when I give it to Steven, it doesn't leave. But let's just pretend Steven is somebody that works at Visa. And every month I'm used to giving $100 to Visa as my monthly payment. Now, I don't know how many of you have gotten one of those like notices in the mail recently that when you open it, it's one page and it just says our terms have changed. Maybe some of you get the email from your credit cards. How much is your interest rate now? Remember back in the days when interest rates were, you could get credit cards, shoot 0% all day long with the tr balance transfers. They, are, they still exist, but they're, they're rare. Okay, but you you know, 15%, I would have said would have been about the normal in credit cards, 15.99. How much are they now? I just got one today when I went and got the mail. 29.99%. I got really good credit, good income, good assets, and 29.99%. Literally, that's what the thing said. It went up from 21.99, which should I be like, wow, well, 21 was a great rate. 29, that sucks. I don't care because I pay it off every month. They get none of my money, zero. 
okay? And they're gonna like it, whether they, they want it or not. So now I take that $100 that I had earning interest and I then give it to Visa and I pay off the credit card. Now, I know it's probably more than 100, but just go with it. I pay off the credit card. Now, if every month I paid Visa 100 bucks, I paid Visa off. I don't owe Visa 100 bucks anymore. But that doesn't mean you should stop making that $100 payment. So here's the fun part. This is the infinite banking concept, taking back the banking functions in your life. I, ideally, being your own bank and acting like a bank and mimicking a bank. That's everything that we're teaching you right here, right now. Although banks can't pay you interest on money that's technically not there, but insurance companies can't. So I paid Visa off. I used to give Visa 100 bucks every month. But now I still make that $100 payment, but I make that payment back to my bank. And my bank is that place where that $100 went. And, and by now you all know it, it's a specially designed whole life. So I'm repaying the loan that I took from the whole life. So now some of you are even more confused. You're like, wow, you totally lost me. Let me, let me make it super simple. Insurance companies make two promises in a contract when you get a policy, just like the policy I did for Bob, the one that passed away I mentioned. Two promises. Promise number one, guarantee number one. They're going to pay you a guaranteed interest rate for the rest of your life. There's a live chat. We have a Facebook group, an IBC Facebook group, and there's a chat. A lot of people you know, chat in on there, and there's one person that was like, oh, that one company, One America, they pay 3.25%. Like, that sucks when they charge you 5% for the loan interest. You know, where he was getting all of his information from chat GPT. But anyway, there's another video coming, the great debate. And it's me debating chat GPT about IBC and I win. You stay tuned for that one. But if I pay these off and now I'm making the payments back to myself, let me show you how that works. It's simple. Every month you got an extra hundred dollars coming into the specially designed and engineered whole life because you're repaying a loan. But I didn't talk about the loan yet. You see, when I took the $100 and I gave it to Steven, the visa person, okay, that wasn't my $100. Because remember, I said my $100 is still in the account. That was the insurance company's $100. But that was promise number two. And that's what I began with. Remember, I said start with the end and the beginning becomes really easy. The end was the death benefit, the money that's going to pay on, you know, it's going to pay out the day you die to your family to help them live a better life and secure everything that they they want and you knew, you want them to have. The insurance company promises you in a whole life for the rest of your life, not in term insurance. Okay, sometimes not in IULs because I just looked at an IUL that was designed for me that literally didn't make the cut. In the guaranteed column, it ended because the cost of insurance took it out. So we're talking just whole life here. That whole life promises to pay a death benefit when you die. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you live to 121, they'll pay the death benefit then. So the other thing in the contract it says is you at any time you want without any real barriers, like yeah, four questions to answer, they will give you part of your death benefit while you're living up to the amount of cash value you have in your account. In this case, I said $100. So if I got $100 in cash value earning guaranteed interest and dividends for that guy on that chat, it's not just the interest. The insurance company also pays you a dividend because these are mutually owned insurance companies that pay dividends to the policy owners, kind of like stock companies or publicly traded companies pay dividends to their stockholders, which is not you in most cases. Mutuals pay dividends to the policy holders, okay? You are literally a component of that machine with a mutually owned insurance company. So the insurance company allows us to take that $100 out as a loan against our death benefit, okay? Which you have the ability to repay the death benefit or don't repay the death benefit. The insurance company does not care or will never even ask you to pay back that $100. Matter of fact, I think, and I don't want to speak out of line, but you know, if compliance kind of got a hold of this, I think the insurance company probably would prefer that you don't pay the death benefit back because the insurance company charges you interest on that loan. Oh, you know, you're, some of you are like, oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew there was a catch. Oh, yeah. Insurance companies are not nonprofit companies. Thank God they're profit companies because they make a freaking ton of money. And that's what we want them to do because the more they make, the more we make because our dividend just keeps going up. You know, and then the only thing we got to worry about is, is Brent would call it, you know, dividend clippers. That's it. But we're not going to cover that. So that loan that I paid Visa off with, well, that loan was part of my death benefit, collateralized by the hundred dollars that's still in my account earning interest and dividends. Now, does it make sense? But if we're truly going to be honest bankers and we're going to we're going to do everything that a bank does, well, 
then look at what you do with banks. When you take a car loan from a bank, you make monthly payments to the bank. You don't ever skip those monthly payments because you know your car will get repoed in the middle of the night. Matter of fact, me and Steven are talking about a really good business opportunity that maybe we'll find a way to do it, but I'm going to put it out into the universe right here. I feel because car loans just exceed, what did they just exceed, Steven? We just had car loan debts exceed student loan debts. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. So believe, that this morning. believe this or, or don't. Car loans, the the total amount of car loans in this country just exceeded college student loan debt. Isn't that crazy? So I think a great business would be to start a, a repo company, okay, and start getting relationships with all the banks. Find somebody that already has a repo company because we're not going to run the repo company. We're just going to fund the repo company. And you know, when all this thing crashes and burns and people can't make their car payments, because the average car payment right now is like six, seven hundred bucks. When they can't make that car payment, like the repo company goes and collects the car. But what I'm trying to say is not the business opportunity I just talked about, but I'm trying to say that you make those payments because there's repercussions if you don't. So with the visa scenario, if you stopped paying visa because you paid them off, great. Make that payment back to your policy because the coolest part is when you made a $100 payment to visa, you didn't get any of that money back. When you make a $100 payment back to your policy as a loan repayment to replenish the death benefit that you borrowed, you get all that money back every penny of it. Because if you give the insurance company $100 and a loan repayment, that $100 literally pays down the loan by $100. So tomorrow, how much more money do you have in your policy? $100. That's right. And the interest and dividends that the insurance company is paying you as of today, and shoot, as far back as I can look you know, with records, it's always been more than what they charge you in loan interest. So I'm not always the smartest guy, but please correct me if I'm wrong. If I earn 5.6%, which is one of the carriers we work with, that's gross. If I earn that compounding, please tell me, is that good if when I take it out, I pay 5%? Is that a good thing? I make 5.6. If I take the money out, I pay 5. Because it is cool, because I'm just going to write it right here in BYOB, because that is what a bank does every single day. They make a spread. See, but in a bank world, what they do, okay, in a bank world, here's how it works. They pay you 1%. They lend that same money out at, I don't know, I don't know what the lowest bank loan is right now, but 6 to 12%, sorry, 6 to 12%. So this is this is traditional banks. And, and I know some of you are like, nope, banks pay more than that. All right, let's give them 3%. But isn't it the same thing? What are they making in the middle? A spread. But who in a bank scenario is making the spread? Is it you or the bank? It's the bank. Whose money are they using? Your money, my money, Stephen's money, all of our money, right? It's not their money. They're making a spread on somebody else's money. So all I'm proposing to you folks is, isn't it way funner when we become the bank and when we make the spread? Because I mean, I call me just a, a logical guy, but that seems to make more sense than doing what everybody's taught to do their entire life, which is take money, make it, give it to the bank, and then when we need money, go to the bank and borrow money from the bank. I just showed you the equation. They make a spread. They, the banks, make a spread. But if you change where that money went first, instead of putting it in their bank and you put your savings in your bank, that's specially designed whole life, doesn't the math look way better? This spread is you being your own bank. Pretty freaking cool. But not only that, we get to, in doing this cool thing, which I know everybody gets super excited about, we also take care of that love part, that legacy part, because there's a death benefit. It's just automatic. And I get some people with the, the chat GPT stuff. What they'll say to me is they'll say, uh, yeah, but Chris, when you take loans from your cash value, like when you die, there's no more death benefit left. I laugh my ass off at this. I really, I really do. So what I had today is I've literally got a policy. So we're just going to do some simple arithmetic. None of that fancy uh, common core math stuff that I just simply cannot make any logical sense of what they teach our kids today. But I'm just going to go back to the, you know, the 50s when they taught applicable math, arithmetics. Is that what they call it? Or anyway, Stephen. So here we go. Here, here's a question I got. Literally, somebody said, you know, so if I start one of these policies, I got a death benefit. And then if I take loans, I, like, I, am I going to get anything? You know, is there going to be anything left? Well, here's the math. So this policy design, somebody had 60 grand, okay? 50 of that 60 was just money they had sitting in a regular bank account that they just dumped in, okay? Move it from your 
Just imagine 50 grand in your right pocket. You take it out of the right pocket, you put it in the left pocket. Why? Because the left pocket pays you more. That's why. And then $10,000 a year is the amount he wanted to save. So this is the policy makeup. So year one, the, the 60 that he put in has a cash value of 54,843. Now, some of you will notice that is not 100% of the 60%. So just to get this out in the open for any of you new that don't know this, like if you put 60 grand in one of these policies, you cannot take out the full 60 grand the first year. Sorry, but I'll tell you why. So if you got 54,843 of the 60 to use, what else do you have? The second promise. This scenario, which is based on my age, I'm 46, just so you know, is $823,888, okay? That's, that's what you paid for. So what was that? Roughly 5,200 bucks. I paid 5,200 bucks to make sure my family was protected by, for $823,888. Any questions? Because if you question that, game over. You're disqualified. We don't want to work with you, period. I started this with the end, not the beginning. Now I'm taking you back to the beginning of the book, okay? Now let's go 20 years. Let's go 20 years into the future, okay? I'm just going to fast forward 20 years. 20 years from now, I'm going to do it over here. This is 20 years from now. And this exact policy, I'm happy to share the numbers, but I'm just reading off this thing. I'm only allowed to put 3,500 bucks in, okay? That ended, I was only able to put the 10,000 in up to the 10th year, then it was 3,500. So I put 3,500 in, my 3,500 that year, this is kind of fun, I never get a chance to do this, but I gotta, I gotta boast a little bit. Can anyone guess how much just the dividend is that year? Remember, it's compounding, so it doesn't matter whether the money was left in the policy or taken out. Can anyone guess how much the dividend was? Let's see, anyone wanna take a wild stab? 20 years in, <laughs> Janet, uh, so, holy cow, who said 7,800 bucks? So 20 years in, they're close. Just the dividend is $8,712. So at that time, I have a total debt, a total cash value of $289,007. So Stephen, can you just do some quick math for me? I've never done this, but this is my cash value in the 20th year, okay? And, and hold on, my death benefit is, 20 years is 437,298. So for that person that said, if I took all the money out, I would have no death benefit. First off, Stephen, if I took loans for all of the money every year, I just kept taking it. I had $289,007. Subtract that from $437,298. What, what does my family get? 148291. Now that's better than a sharp stick in the eye, isn't it? Okay. Now, second thing, if I took all $289,007 out and the insurance company charged me 5% simple interest, how much interest is this greedy insurance company charging me in that interest they charge? This is loan interest we're going to put down here. About 5%? Yeah, 5. So 289,007 times 0 0.05. What do we got? What's the interest they're charging me on that? 14,400. Okay, 14,400. So the dividend alone was 8,700. It almost paid all of that. So now what I wanna do is now that I've already debunked the fact that you're still gonna have a death benefit left if you loaned all of it out, which is not being an honest banker because you're always recapturing the money. But now what I wanna show you is in the 20th year, how much money I actually made. So I actually made in the 20th year, $14,623. I made $14,623 total on $3,500. I, I put in 3,500 that year. I made 14,623. I gave back to the insurance company 14,400. Now I made money. I made a spread. Now some of you are like, that's not much. But again, I'm just doing surface level. I'm not teach, I'm not showing you the infinite banking concept because you'd be making a lot more. I'm just showing you if you abuse this, took all the money out by the 20th year, you can't kill the policy. Like you've literally gotten every penny of your money back. You still got a death benefit. You used $289,000 in the next year. The next year, the 21st year, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put 3,500 in. And how much money is your total amount you're going to make? $15,090. You see, the cool part about this is, is every year you make more money than you did the prior year. Every day you have more money than you did the prior day. So what I'm trying to show you here is like literally in the worst case scenario, does this suck? If you love your family and you needed to access all of the money and you were a terrible banker, you never paid your policy back, you never practiced IVC, you just bought a stupid whole life policy, abused it, took all the money out. Did you do okay? Yeah. You didn't do terrible. 
you're still ahead of the game. You still got a death benefit. And next year, you're going to have more money. Well, that doesn't suck. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. Now, if you apply the infinite banking concept, and now what I want to do is I want to bring Steven into this and I want to show you some really cool things. Any, well, first off, actually, anyone have any questions on that? That was just the whole life. That was literally like you put money in the whole life and that's it. You never did anything else. You just took money out and I don't care. You, you blew it at the casino. That's what I just showed you. Okay. But now some of you really want to build wealth. So we have to apply a process called infinite banking concepts. And we have to actually be an honest banker and not steal from our bank. Like I just showed you, this is stealing from your bank, your bank. Unfortunately, if you steal from, or fortunately, if you steal from your bank, it doesn't really close. It never goes out of business. You just keep stealing and, you just have less. You just don't have as much. But let's just say we found this really freaking cool website. And I'm going to share this really freaking cool website it's called Private Money Club. So let's just say you found this really cool website. I got to tell this guy that he's got to you know, email support. We do have a big question mark at the top. But anyway, let's just look here. Can we find a deal? Actually, I'm going to go. This is just the dashboard. Or sorry, just the... Uh, Forum, but let's go to the deals and let's just see who's got a cool deal. If I had 289,000 bucks, well, that's why I didn't update it. How much money could I make? So now we're going to kind of come over here. We're going to look at deals. I know Chris Rude right now has a bunch of deals. So this is one of Chris Rude's deals right here. Great deal, 190 grand. So I'm supposed to have one of my loans paying off, which will give me like 300 and something back. I'm, I'm going to gobble these Chris Rude deals up. If some, if one of you don't, because I've been lending to Chris Rude now for, I don't even know how many years, lend him millions of dollars. And he's never, ever, ever not made a payment, never missed a payment, never even gave me any trouble whatsoever. So there's a Chris Rude deal for 190. So I'm just going to use that one because that's, that deal just hit 12% interest, which by today's standards might even be lower for what the deals are, but that's my minimum. He needs 190 for this particular house. At 12% interest, per, you know, he'll pay that. So that that 12% would be, I got to get that fixed too. It's not 12% a month, it's 12% annualized. But um, what does that work out to be? So if I took 190 of that money that we just talked about, and I lent it out at 12%, times 0.12, 22,800 bucks. Okay, so I'm going to write that on the board. We're going to go to a different screen. So if I take 190 as a loan from that whole life policy. So I lend that money to Chris Rude on that property. We'll just say this is the Rude deal, 12% interest. How long does it say? Let's see. Loan term generally 12 months or less. So I put it, I'm interested. I'm interested in more information. And also I'm going to put, is this deal 12% per month or 12 percent per year it says it's 12 percent per month now don't get excited folks i know it's not 12 percent a month but i'm just kind of telling andrew that that's not correct but anyway what is correct is that i'm going to make twenty two thousand dollars twenty two thousand eight hundred dollars on that deal in interest okay so now let me uh so just that I showed you this here, okay, we can continue chatting. I can do anything I want. I can go deeper. I can, I can look at financials of the property. I can look at the property. This is a bare bones basics, but just real quick, just so that I don't pigeonhole it just with one deal. Let's just find another one. Uh, seeking 10 year first position loan. All right. 10 years. If anyone wanted to just kind of set it and forget it, here's a $50,000 deal, 10 years, 8% simple interest. So I don't know how much activity they're going to get on this because a lot of people can get 8% very easily today. So let's skip that one. I'm not doing 8%. Any of you doing 8% right now? Or are you guys looking for a little bit more than 8%? Let's see. Seeking interest only loan. What do we got here? 55? Look at how many cool deals there are. 15%. There we go. Seeking interest only loan note for 55 at 15% for three years. 
monthly payout, 680. Look at it. He spelled it right out. Who is, who is this? Reed. So Reed spells it all out. The only question I'd have, which is probably in here, is his first position. But anyway, getting too deep into it, he's got all, all sorts of info here you can look at. But 55, I, you could just make a, an entire business out of just going on here and making your money work for you if you save up enough. 12%, 30% second lien. I don't do second liens. This is a good deal. I know that character right there, Mike. You know, get, get a bunch of friends together or a bunch of folks on PMC together, pool the money and lend 3.5 million. That's a, that's a solid deal. Anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole. 190 came out of that policy. Remember the numbers on that policy? Just trying to keep you, remember we just talked about abusing the policy and not doing it, but remember the math? We made money there. So we made a spread, although not big, 223 bucks we made. Okay, on, on that particular, just from the policy. But then over here, I then picked up and made 22,800 bucks. 22,000 divided by 12, 1,900 bucks a month. So what the smart IBC folks do and what the smart people do is they take this 1,900 and they pay it back into their policy, which reduces the loan, which also reduces the interest that the insurance company's charging. See what I'm trying to explain here? I showed you worst case scenario you still made money over here. Worst case scenario. But now if we pay this loan down because we start doing what we're supposed to, we're an honest banker and we take back the banking functions. Well, part of taking back the banking functions is when you make money on your money, put the money back into your bank, not their bank. And when you put the money back into your bank, $1,900 is available the next day or whenever your check clears. Okay, so every month we put this interest that Chris Rude paid us on that 190, we put it back into our policy, we have 1900 bucks available if we need it, okay? Because that money just goes right to the bottom line, right to the principal. And we reduce the loan. So now every month, what we're also reducing is the amount of interest that is due. So in one year, that 190 that was owed to the insurance company is reduced by 22,800. So if we do that, that's 167. After one year, 167,200. One year times 0.05 is 8360 for that year. How much was my dividend? Do you see what just happened there folks? Do you see that? I'm not playing I'm not playing games here. I'm not doing a magic trick. In one year of lending only 190 of that 200 and some thousand out, only 190 on a real deal that is available to each and every single one of you today right now on Private Money Club. I don't have anything to do with it. Go on Private Money Club and do it. Okay? You make 1900, you do that for a year, you pay your loan down. Now, how much is owed in interest to the insurance company at the 5%? 8360. How much did your dividend pay you that year alone? 8712. See what I'm trying to say? Now, 190, not even all of it, working for you starts to make a whole lot of sense. Plus, you made 12%. So, what a lot of times what we'll do is we'll say, okay, if your money's out there working at 12 and you owe the insurance company five, just do the math on this side, if that makes you feel better. So you made a spread of 7%. Doesn't matter, you're making money twice. We say this all the time. How do you make money twice on the same dollar? Just showed you. Are you guys liking this? I, I know I'm kind of going down some rabbit holes, but are you guys enjoying what I'm trying to show you? Like this is stuff that me and Steven like thought through. And I, I know like, it just seems like I'm rambling, which I do this every week. I just tend to ramble. I just love this stuff so much. But we started with the end, love, death benefit, legacy, why you actually really do this. And then we're coming back to the beginning of just showing how it works and walking you through and then breaking the math down because everybody's always like, oh, the math doesn't work. I, I just showed you the math absolutely works all the time, every time, but I'm doing it with private lending. So there was this guy who joined, you know, a lot of people are even skeptical on whether or not private money club works. See this young, little devilish, handsome man here, Bo, his name is, see that guy? This guy, when he joined PMC, he was... I don't want to call him a Debbie Downer. And if Bo, if you're on here, like you can handle the heat, but he was kind of a Debbie Downer. He was kind of like, oh, you know, I, I put a deal up on there. I'm not getting much. And I'm like, are you reaching out to people? Oh, I'm sending emails. I'm reaching out to people. Great. Just keep doing that. Keep doing exactly what you're doing. He, and, you know, I got a couple more emails back from, oh, it just doesn't seem like it's going to work. Are you sure? Like, it seems like I'm not getting any activity. So this is just one of his deals. Literally just posted August 9th. Uh, so this, I don't know if this deal is funded, probably not if it was posted August 9th, but 145. So I don't know how long ago that, Stephen, do you remember how long ago it was that Bo was saying that stuff compared to now? 
Yeah, really? so back uh, a few months ago, back in like maybe May. Maybe six months ago? Yeah. That's when he was Debbie Downer. He just got into PMC, said it wasn't working. He was having a hard time. Anyone want to take a guess how much money? And Bo, if, if you're on here, tell everybody. You guys can go on and ask him in, in PMC. There's no restrictions. Not like I'm just picking this out of the sky, but email Bo or message Bo on privatemoneyclub.com and ask him, how much money have you raised on Private Money Club to date? Anyone want to take a guess? How much do you think Bo, that young real estate investor who was, de Nicholas is right. I think he, Nicholas heard that on maybe WTF this morning. Uh, it was, I think, 2.2 million. He raised $2.2 million for his deals. You think that changed his life? You think that changed his family's life? You think that would change your guy's life? If, if you stay consistent and persistent with what you're doing, you will have the exact same results as Bo. Okay, if, you're pers if you post the deals and you give the proper information, and yes, right now, like to really get activity and really strong activity on your deals on Private Money Club, you're probably gonna have to pay 12 is the minimum. I'm just being honest, that 8% deal, and, and I don't mean to, you know, I'm sure it's a great deal, but I wouldn't lend on an 8% deal. Brent Kessler wouldn't lend on it. Brent Nagy wouldn't lend on it. Steven wouldn't lend on it. Like, because why? Because we can go out there and get first lien position deals with the Fullers, with Robin Nicole Fuller, with Brood, with, you know, Bo's paying us 15% first position, first lien. So why would we lend money for 10 years at 8%, not knowing where interest rates are going to go? Because actually, did Jerome, sorry, not to transition, but did Jerome Powell go live? Did they raise rates? Did we get any news on that? Actually, I have not even looked. So Paul said, totally confusing presentation. Sure wish you spelled my name correctly. Uh, I don't know where we would have spelled your name, Paul. You would have <laughs> put your name into your Zoom account, which is what we're all seeing. So if your name's spelled wrong on Zoom, you did that, not us. So not quite sure how that happened, but sorry about the confusing presentation. Obviously, I missed something there or... I don't know. I'll try to make it up to you the next one. But, uh, you know, I can't make everybody happy, folks. You know, Paul, he's not happy. So yeah, maybe he won't come back. Maybe he will. Maybe he's uh, down to be consistent and persistent and give it a, a try the second time. But uh, either way, hopefully I'm not confusing a lot of you. I know I went kind of in reverse order, but it was by design. Started with the end, came back to the beginning. I don't know too much where I, I might have been confusing, but everybody understands making 15% on their money. Okay, that's pretty simple. Everybody understands that if you make 12% on your money and you got to pay five to use that money, you are in the money with a positive spread of seven. Everybody understood that this was just the policy. You put 3,500 in the policy in the 20th year, you made 14,623. Everybody understands that's kind of cool, right? And you make 14,623, whether the money's in there or not, that doesn't change because it's the insurance company giving you the loan for the 289000 Stephen, where did I go wrong? What did I miss? No, it's just if you're brand new to this, you really should start with um, just the basic 90-minute video, which really lays it out in a more you know cohesive format that kind of walks you through the path of mindset first, because a, la a large part of understanding IBC is a shift in mindset. And so the full 90 minute presentation really walks you through that psychological journey of understanding not only what this is, but why we're doing it. So you definitely want to start there, um, which most people on this webinar right now have already watched that 90 minute and, um, you know, are ready for more, you know, additional education and training like we're doing today. So that's the only thing. And I'll, I'll post a link for the 90 minute right now in the chat box so you can go watch that. And then, you know, we have, you know, lots of different examples of ways that we explain this because everybody learns differently. You know, some people can watch this today for the first time and say, wow, that makes all the sense in the world. Others, um, like Paul, maybe, you know, hey, that's a little confusing. I need to kind of simple it down a little bit more. And then they can build into learning more of this kind of thing. And that's why we do webinars every single week. We put out education on YouTube uh, multiple times a week and just to connect with different people, different mindsets, different starting points. You know, we start with people that are putting a couple hundred bucks a month into one of these policies to people putting in, you know, over a million dollars a year into these. So, um, you know, it's hard to kind of connect with everybody on every single webinar that we do, but we do have those resources for you 
wherever that level is. So I'll share that for you. Let me go back to the basics because, you know, Michael Jordan did that every time he hit the court. And maybe I missed the basics today because I started with the end. But it's this simple and we see this every day. So just let's do the tale of, I don't know, let's pick on a, a guy named Joe. Name, not any of you, just a guy named Joe. Okay, so Joe is a very typical client of ours. Joe has debts. Okay, he's got a car loan. Let's just say he's got a car loan that's $30,000 and he makes $600 a month payments to that car loan. He's got credit cards, which are about $100,000. Eh, let's not make it that high. Let's make it $20,000 in credit cards and he's paying $300 a month. And these are 29%. Car loan is 3%. And then anyway, so we, well, let's just do those two for now, okay? So this is Joe's scenario. And then over on this side, Joe has a savings account that every month he puts money into it, rainy day money, and he's got $50,000 in his, in his savings account. Very traditional kind of scenario. We see this every single day. And Joe like has the 50 grand here, and let's just say he's got a really good bank paying him 3%. So let's give like the banks a round of applause for some of you earning 3%. So this is, this is Joe. Does anyone right now see any scenarios that maybe would be problematic here? Can anyone... Like this is this is basics, folks. What do you see here that doesn't make sense? Joe's got a bank account savings of fifty grand, earning three percent. Bank's got or Joe's got a car loan at three percent, earning or paying six hundred dollars a month, and he's got credit cards for twenty thousand dollars that he pays three hundred dollars a month to, and he's trying to pay them off, and they're twenty nine percent interest. Can anyone tell me where the mathematical problem is here? This is kind of like your teacher. Why is Todd? Todd said, why is the money in the bank? <laughs> <laughs> the interest rate he's paying. Okay. But be more specific. Tess said, uh, I'm a finance person for years. Caused me to have debt. Okay. But, but what else? Like, where is the, oh wait, somebody just got it. Morgan just got it. Paying more in interest than he's earning. Okay. That's the first thing you should have seen with like in a spec. Oh, duh. Why would Joe have 50 grand in a bank account earning 3% when he's got credit card debts for 20 grand that he's paying 29% on? Duh. Like, isn't 29% better than three? It, it, or isn't 3% and 3% the same? I did that intentionally. So like he's earning three, but he's paying 3% to the bank. He's earning three, but paying 29%. So what would be the logical thing for Joe to do? Like just from the surface, for, forget about the, the stupid whole life. Wouldn't it make sense for Joe to take 20 grand from his bank account that he's earning 3% on, pay off the $20,000 $20, in credit card debts, take the $300 every single month that he was given the credit cards and put that back into the bank, okay? Wouldn't that just make sense? Forget, remember, we didn't do the policy yet because I, I don't know. I mean, call me silly, but... That seems really good because Joe's making 29, 28, 27, 26, 26% more money doing that. Why would Joe not do that? Oh, this is for rainy day. Well, how long would it take Joe to pay back the $20,000 at $300 a month? But you see, Joe didn't have just 20,000. Joe had 50. So let's just say, and hopefully, you know, Joe's still adding to this every month. So it'll replenish itself. So let's just assume Joe's putting a thousand bucks a month into his savings account. So after a year, he's going to have 12 grand back in there plus the $300 a month, which he's paying back in. Okay. So let's just figure this out. So 300 times 12, I should be able to do that in my head. 30, I did have it right. 3,600. So he's got 3,600 plus a thousand going back in. So that's his emergency fund. But what if he then took, you know, the 20, the next year when he pays back the 3,600 and puts the thousand in, when he's got another 30,000 built up in here, wouldn't it make sense for Joe to take the 30 and pay off the car and then take back and pay himself back the $600 a month car payment? Now, whether now I teach this a lot and I, I want to, to Paul's defense, I want to really hammer this home. When you pay off your car loan now, you don't typically go in and set up a bill pay with a check back to yourself, do you? You just pay off the car loan. And then what happens when you pay off the car loan? Well, Doc, Chris, I don't have a $600 a month payment anymore. So that $600 a month say, is where? In your savings or your checking account, probably your checking account. But when you pay off your car loan, does anyone feel like they have extra money at the end of the month? 
you know, you're not giving away $600. Joe is not giving away $600 to the bank for the car payment anymore. But if they don't follow this one simple step, I didn't talk about a whole life yet, just this one step, that it won't feel like they have an extra 600 because most people, when they pay off their loans, they don't do this. They just keep that money and they just, they say, oh, I no longer owe it. Thank God. And then that $600 gets spent somewhere else and they no longer have that $600 and then they're broke again and feeling broke again, right? So here's how you fix that. It's so simple. Go and set up, I, I just went and did it yesterday, set up a separate bank account. That's all this is. Go to your bank and just open a new checking account. Do this tomorrow. When you pay off this credit card for 20 grand, take the $300 and set up a bill pay. Sounds so dumb, right? Some of you are thinking this is the dumbest thing ever. I can't believe I'm wasting my time. I'm, I'm never going to get this time back. Just hear me out. Set up a, a payment back to yourself for $300 and make that check payable to you. In the mail, within 10 days, you'll get this little, this little thing, okay? this little envelope that has a check in it. And you got to tear off the two side corners, rip the top one off. It folds up and there's the check. You tear the top one off. And then if you really are feeling over ambitious that day, there's another little bifold piece that's on the top. And then you just crease that over. I always peel that off because, hey, always go the extra mile. You know, a military man did a, a video that said, you know, why do they make their bed every day? It's because how you do one thing is how you do everything. Fair enough, right? So that's what I do every day now. That $300 every month is sent to you. You get a check. What are you going to do with that check when you get it? You're going to fill out a deposit slip, and you're, or you're, you can do the, the thing where you zap it with your phone. I do the deposit slip. And what account are you going to put it back in? The separate account, the new account you just created. Because why? Well, because this new account, now you know that that's the money you used to give away. So your mindset is now changed because you are effectively starting to become the bank. You paid off the credit card. You paid the credit card payment that you used to make to them back to yourself, but you did it with a bill pay. So the money isn't just sitting in a checking account that gets absorbed by your kids or your wife or your husband or you. It just, it's going to a separate account that is built for this. Okay, and the other thing too, how much did you make here? How much money did Joe make? 29%. Did anyone miss that? If he was giving 29% away to Visa, and he now is say, sending the same exact check on the same exact balance back to his bank account. He's effectively recapturing 29%, is he not? But yet, here's what people do. This is what's smart to do. And you do the same thing with the car payment, 600. But, but you know, hey, I, I'm the idiot here. So here's what people do. Now, tell me who's right and who's wrong. Joe has 50 grand in his savings account. He saves $1,000 every single month. Joe is out to uh, out golfing with his buddy who talks about this stock that his buddy bought. Oh, it's this new stock. It's going to be this amazing thing. It's it's IPOing soon, blah, blah, blah. Joe takes the 50000 and invests this because he thinks he's going to make a 29% return on this really freaking good investment. I know that sounds idiotic, or at least I hope some of you think that sounds idiotic, but that is what people do. Maybe it's not some IPO thing, but maybe it's just a mutual fund that their investor said. Maybe they got the 50 grand there and they're like, oh, you know, what, how, how much could you make to their advisor? And their advisor says, I don't know. I'm, you know, the, the last 30 years in the stock markets returned 7%. So worst case, over 30 years, we make you 7%. Seven is better than three. Joe puts the money in there. Joe could have made 29% risk-free, risk-free by just paying off his credit cards. But Joe went and took a ton of risk investing in something he doesn't know, like, and understand for the hope and pray of making that kind of a return. This is real. This is real. This is what people do. So now, one step further, now that everybody understands this. So you all can agree, right? It would have made sense for Joe to pay that off, take the $300 a month, put it in that separate bank account, and let that money build up there. And we can just assume that this bank account's 3% too. Okay, that made sense. We all understand that. Now, what if Joe changed one thing? That's it. What if Joe just changed one thing? And Joe took that 50 grand and put it into a specially designed whole life and then took that money he used to save, that $1,000 a month, and put it into that specially designed whole life. And he did the exact same thing. Took the money out immediately, $20,000, paid off that credit card, did the same thing, took the $300, paid back his policy, 
okay? And then took 30,000 out after that, paid off the car, took the $600 a month, paid it back to the policy. What changed? It's the identical thing that Joe, I just rocked you through. I'm literally going back to the basics. I hope this is making more sense now. What changed here? What, by changing where the money went first and putting it into that dumb whole life, what changed? I'll tell you. What changed is that Joe will earn interest and dividends on this money for the rest of his life, forever, tax-free. Joe will have a death benefit. I don't know, for that policy, maybe 300 to 400,000, I don't know. You know, he'll have a death benefit that takes care of the love and legacy part of his whole plan. But also, Joe will have made a spread on his money and will continue to make a spread on his money because what he gets paid by the insurance company is more than what the insurance company charges him. So what did Joe accomplish? The exact same thing. Joe literally did the same thing he would have done before, but by changing it, you guys can all do the math and figuring out what is the compounding effect of that money never, ever, ever not earning interest, and then adding $1,000 every single month to that equation. Well, that brings you back to what I showed you earlier. So hopefully that brought us full circle. I'm here all day, folks. Like, I, I'm trying to just bring it back to the basics. Steven, did, was that any better? Did that make a little bit more sense? Yeah, I like it. Okay. It's not up to me, though. What's everybody else think? I don't know. He paid himself, right? That's all he did, Stacy. Maybe I did go a little bit fast into the last one. Cool. So now let's just say Joe gets ambitious and has saved a bunch of money and Joe's got 190K in here now. What should Joe do? Just, just making sure you guys are paying attention here. So Joe's now got, so we got rid of the savings. All the money's now changed where it goes, but now Joe has paid off all of his debts. Cars paid off, credit cards are paid off, equipment, you know, that, so Joe's got 190 grand. So Joe's like, wow, I don't have any more debts to pay off. So now what am I going to do with this 190? Bring you back to the end. Private money club. Private money club. He goes on there, finds a deal like this. Doesn't need 190, just does 145. Puts 145 out. Now Joe has 15% coming back in times 0.15. That's $21,750 every year. That's $1,812 a month. How many of you can honest to God say that if you had an extra $1,812 a month starting tomorrow, that would change your family's financial situation? Put I in the chat. $1,812 every month that you don't have to go to work for, that you literally took on very little risk for. It's just your money working for you. You got $1,812 coming back. Would that change your life? Yeah, I know, Brad, you're definitely doing it. A lot of, lot of the folks on here, Dexter's doing it. I mean, I could just go through and see the names. A lot of these folks are doing it. But I, I know it would change your life because it changed mine. It changed Stevens. It changed Stevens. Um, it's Brent Nagy, his cousin, changed his life. Beyond changed Brent Nagy's life. But let me, let me give you one other story. There's another guy, a guy that runs our fractional CFO program. He was, a, he was a corporate CFO. Good job, right? A couple hundred grand for a corporate CFO. But... He was working for the man, if, if, if you want to put it that way. So he started applying all the stuff that we're doing. Started doing it. Started lending money on private money club, just like I just showed you. He is effectively right now financially independent. So what does that mean? Well, it means he doesn't need corporate America to pay him a paycheck. Why? Because he makes more money from his money working for him than he did when he worked a regular 40-hour-a-week job for corporate America. He makes more now because his money's actually working for him, making him more. So then what is he free to do? Well, now he's got all this time. He can play basketball. He can watch the Bills games. He can go out with his friends. And, you know, he can begin to build his own business, you know, or work with somebody like us to build a business. Now he has his own business. It's a tax business, okay, because he's a CPA. So he does people's taxes. You're all welcome to call him or get on the phone if you need a good CPA that understands all this stuff. But what he also does is runs Fractional CFO, which you'll learn about on our next three-day Money School Essentials training that we've got coming up in, uh, what was that, a little over a month? Well, a lot over a month, about a month and a half. But we're already opening it up for ticket sales. So he does that. Like, how many of you want financial independence to be able to pick and choose what you do with your time, when you do it with your time, and how much money you make in that free time? That's what he did. How many of these other folks on here? 114 left. How many of these other folks have already done what you want to do? They're right here. Ask them. Dexter, I know, did. Ask them. Ask them how they did it. 
It's not complicated. They, they did what I just showed you. That's what they did. Maybe not in the exact order, but they did it. And all the while, all the while they did all that stuff. Going back to the beginning. If something should happen tomorrow to any of them, to Zach, to Dexter, to me, there's a death benefit. Whether they want it or not, there's a death benefit being paid to their beneficiary. And I guarantee you their beneficiary is probably somebody that they love. Is that not the ultimate way to show your loved one that you love them without actually saying, I love you? I'll let you be the judge of that. Let's open it up for questions. Yeah. And, and just so everybody's aware, like if this stuff is kind of like you're right there at it or you're a little nervous about doing it or something like that. I mean, that's why we're here. We, when it comes to the infinite banking policies, we don't charge anything. We're here to support you, help you hold your hand throughout the entire process. Um, even once you have the policy, our implementation team is right there to show you how to move the money, recapture it, do the whole banking process and, and all of that. So just know you're never on your own when it comes to private money lending, You'll want to join the Private Money Club platform, which is privatemoneyclub.com. If you're a little nervous about finding deals or how it works or what to look for, the questions to ask, things like that, we have a really cool coaching program set up for you. For those of you that want that hand-holding and just you know that, that confidence that you're doing things the right way. Uh, so you'll want to join our, our accelerator coaching program. We have the next group starting here in about a month. Um, so you're going to want to get signed up for that now. Uh, tomorrow evening, we have a two hour coaching call that you can hop on and um, join us to already start learning and then get into that accelerator coaching program next month as soon as it starts. And everybody that's gone through that comes out of it feeling like they have the confidence to go out there and do deals, lend their money and do so the right way. Um, I mean, we'll guarantee it, guarantee that you'll 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 leave it feeling good. So um, get, get joined that. And I put a link in the chat box. Uh, what we look for is we look for private money club members and people in our coaching programs that kind of already know what they're doing on the site. So go uh, book a call with our, our demo team and they will walk you through the site and kind of show you how it all works. And then for doing that demo with them, they'll actually give you a big discount also. So you can get started with the accelerator coaching program and become a premier member in private money club at a very significant discount. So um, I scheduled the call there so you can learn more about it. And very, very important though, that you, um, you know what you're doing before you just jump into this stuff. The anonymous said, uh, what are some great questions to filter out knowledgeable level skill sets of a CPA so that they will meet the trajectory of the client's goals? Um, we got a really good CPA on here, James. James, I don't know if you want to put something in the chat for Anonymous about what questions somebody should ask. I mean, first off, I mean, if if you're going to be your own bank and you're going to start applying the infinite banking concept, the first question would be have them, the CPA, don't just ask them, do you know what this uh, infinite banking concept is? Ask them to explain it to you and ask them if they use it. Uh, and if they've ever done taxes for somebody that uses that. If you're getting into real estate or you're in real estate, you should be working with a CPA that focuses on real estate. So ask them, you know, do you work with other real estate investors? You know, can you give me some examples, some testimonials? But I'll let James kind of chime in because he would definitely know how to drill down on that one. Yeah. And James said, uh, this goes back to last week's class. So last week we did wealth webinar, just like we do every week. If you are just starting the IBC, all the cash value is out working and your wife's car breaks down and she needs a new one, how would you handle that situation? Well, that would definitely be an, uh, you know, an unfortunate situation. I don't know what the money's out working for, um, but I mean, in that situation, you do have to revert back to unfortunately going and financing a new car or leasing a new car. I would suggest financing one if you truly need to buy a new car, because if all your money's out there working, then your money should be making extra income. That extra income should be enough to pay for a car. Now, let me just give you that scenario, James. Um, how much? How much was that? Uh, that Chris Rude deal, right? So, James, I you know I don't know how much money you have, but let's just let's just do some math. Let's say thirty thousand dollars is out working. I don't know what it's out there working, but twelve to twenty nine percent if you paid off credit cards. So, let's just do the lower of the two. So, you you took a loan from your policies. You started the process. You took a loan from the policies. That money's out there working for you in some capacity. Wife's car breaks down. You now need a new car, but all your money's already, all this money's out. So you, you feel like you're, you're cash broke. 
but that 30,000 is out there making interest. So if it's making 12%, that's $3,600, okay? Divided by 12, that's $300 a month. And I'm only using 30 grand here. So I don't know how much you had, okay? Out of that $300, we're gonna have to give at least 5% of that back to the insurance company, worst case. So let's do that math times 0.05, 15 divided by 12. That's 125 that we gotta give back to the insurance company. Okay, so what is that? That is minus 300, 175 bucks. So you got $175 a month of extra money. And I know it will disrupt your plan because you probably had all of it going back to that, but I'm just, this is just the worst case scenario. Maybe, maybe this is a real scenario, I don't know. This would be a good case study. So you got 175 bucks that then could be used to finance a car. Now, what kind of car are you gonna get for 175 bucks? Probably not a really nice one. Might have to be an older one. But in hard times, we make hard decisions and we make some sacrifices. So, but the cool part about that is, is at least you've got the income coming back from your money working for you to help offset that car. Hopefully that helps. I, I don't have all the answers for every scenario in everybody's life, but you can mathematically try to solve things. And that's what I tried doing. And I love that Don said this question because yeah, this is one that uh, often kind of just gets overlooked. So Don said, can you address the taxes paid on the interest earned? So it's, you know, she's saying it's not really 12%, which I disagree. Don, it really is 12%. So in this scenario, this 3,600, that is 12%. By the math, if you're making 12% interest, that's 3,600. Now, what she's saying is she's saying is it's not really 3,600 or 12% because you got to pay tax. Sure, what's your tax rate? You know, so depending on your tax rate, let's just go, we'll do 28%. Okay, so if you made 3,600 and you got to give away 28% of that, that means you're going to lose 1,008 in taxes. That's at a 28% tax bracket, assuming no write offs, assuming nothing. Okay, it's just, and that's a fairly high tax rate for some people. So 3,600, so you made 2,592 net. So did you really make that? So let's do 2,592. Okay, let's divide that into 30. You made 8.6% net. Listen, like, I'm not very good at math. I'm good at math, but I'm not really good. But I mean, is anyone complaining over 8.6%? I don't know anybody. After that's net of taxes. Yes, the interest you're going to earn on the deals in private money club, that's tax free. Or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's taxed. But if you paid off a credit card, that's not taxable interest. That's money you're just, you're just keeping it. So it, it's all relative. But I love the question because you're right. And maybe I did some math wrong there, but hey, I mean, it's pretty still pretty good. After taxes, you're netting 8.6. Out of the 8.6, let's just say you're going to pay the insurance company out of this one. So you pay the insurance company the 5% they owe, 876543. You made 3.6% net plus, but wait, there's more, plus the amount the insurance company is paying you an in interest and dividends. Because remember, we factored everything out on the right side of the equation because we just did it from what your money's earning. Or and or do private money lending from your retirement accounts, preferably a Roth, and it's all tax-free. Yep, yeah, lots of ways around that, but I'm just going to keep that one at face value. The anonymous said, Candy asked, what if you need the money to pay off credit cards? Can you get a 0% interest credit card and do balance transfers and use that money to invest? I liked where you were going on that one uh, about the 0% credit card. So let's just say somebody's living paycheck to paycheck and they are they have credit cards. Most people that are, are pinched have credit cards and their credit cards are 29%. You should be searching around for intro rates on other credit cards that might provide like a 0% card. I don't know how many of them out there do that, but then switch it, the balance transfer over to that new card at 0% or whatever intro rate they have. And then you made the spread in between. You could take that spread in between and you could use that to help you pay off the credit card. Would I take that extra money and invest that money? Absolutely not. So I loved where you were going in the beginning, but would I take that extra money and invest it? No, and I'll tell you why. Because that extra money eventually isn't gonna be extra money because that intro rate will end and you will pop back up to the higher rate. So what you wanna do is just temporarily use that money to, to solve the, the problem at hand. Cashier, sit down. Good boy. Uh, to use that money at hand when it's when it's being done. Steven, would you agree with that one or would you say something different to that? No, no, I, I agree. 
And I love Mark just said this. Mark's always kind of reading between the lines. He says, yeah, but it might be 20%, might be capital gains. Right, so the equation just gets better. I, I just want to shoot high because, hey, if I shot high, it still shows it's good. Cal said, since borrowing and lending is central to everything we do, once we have the IBC policy set up, can you recommend where we can find out more about how to optimally set up a business and its main functions to lend so that we can maximize this on the tax side of things? Or do you have a video, how to do, resources? Yeah, we've got several videos on YouTube. I don't know exactly what they're called off the top of my head. I think we've just breached like 800 YouTube videos. And we have a real estate CPA coming on tomorrow night onto the PMC coaching. So if you're a premier member, uh, make sure you join us tomorrow. Um, otherwise, yeah, we can refer you to a couple of companies that that know what they're doing when it comes to borrowing and lending. So just uh, shoot Jack me Newberry or or tomorrow. So I think I think they should just jump on tomorrow. That would be the best way to do that. Don, no complaint. Oh no, Don, totally. Um, like I said when you when I read your question, yeah, you know, I, I I know you do this, but I was just saying like good question. But then I was just kind of breaking it down. I can be rough around the edges, but I think most of you already know that. Paul's like, that guy's a dick. Well, I guess, you know, it is what it is. You are about to bear your soul to a CP or tax preparer with all your financial information. Ask them for theirs. Wow. You show me yours and I'll show you mine. You know, how many of you practiced that when you were a little kid? I'll show you mine if you show me yours. So that's a great question. Show me yours. So if you're gonna you're gonna start working with a CPA, like where is the CPA in a better position than you are? Does the CPA have the whereabouts to know what you're doing? That's great information, James. Uh, ask to see their tax returns to find out if they're walking the walk and make sure they're right, you know, right fit for you. I keep telling James, like James is phenomenal. We wish he would just say, hey, I'm taking new clients on, but I'm always nervous to to do that because you know i i know he's he works with a very specific group of individuals um but if he ever wants more just say it and then don said no worries i love pmc i need another first position deal for 12 to 14 percent on fifty eight thousand dollars. nice so get it up on private money club and uh, make it happen i think that's what you're saying you got a deal i need another first position deal or wait you're looking to lend fifty eight five hundred. yeah lend here, Don, I'm going to email you. We get we we have a deal right now. And and even if even if you don't have enough to fill it, this is perfect. Don, I'll do the deal with you. I've got money in my self-directed IRA that I've been looking for a way to to backfill it. And you might have just solved that for me. So I'll solve a problem for you. You solve a problem for me. We both win. Cool deal. So me and Larissa have available funds in our self-directed IRAs, but we don't have enough to take down any of the deals that I really like, like Chris Rude deals. So let's do it. So email. Andrew and tell him Chris and Larissa will do the balance. Yeah, I, I know you did Chris Rude deals and they've always paid you back. Unfortunately, the problem with Chris Rude deals is sometimes he pays you back a little too soon. Um, all right, so we're four minutes over, but one thing I do want to show everybody is that we have three tickets left. I mentioned it earlier, but we got three tickets left for the money multiplier experience. It's, it's our only mastermind we do. It is very exclusive. There are only 25 people allowed to our masterminds. And usually most of the people that go to the prior one go to the next one. So it fills up quick, but we do have three seats left. We will be in Las Vegas. Okay. And we're going to be doing lots of really cool stuff. And I started with the Beatles. We're actually going to be going and watching the Beatles, you know, that, that show. I don't know what hotel that's at, but we're also going to be racing cars. So we're going to be going to a racetrack and racing cars. This is the hotel that we're going to be staying at. It's, it's sick. It's the Virgin Hotel. Um, super boutique -y, really cool place. There it is. Wild. Here's the agenda. It's the 26th to the 28th. We're doing everything from dinners to breath work. Okay, we're going to do a breath work ceremony, which is wild nightcap, lots of time, you know, just to hang out and talk. It's not speaker after speaker after speaker. Matter of fact, that is not the structure. The structure is so that you go and have an experience, meet people and have time to get deep and talk to people about how each of you can benefit and have win-win scenarios like me and Don are going to have with that deal. So here's all the stuff, a bunch of testimonials. If you guys are interested, I'll put this link in. There literally are only three tickets. If you want to go with a significant other, a spouse, a business partner, there is a discount. Don't snooze because you will lose. There it is.
All right. Well, from all of us here at Money School, including the one and only Lazy Cash here, we wish you a good day. And whoop, cats always land on their feet, they say. We will see most of you at the Ask Me Anything happy hour this afternoon at 4.30 Eastern. Till then, thank you. See you then. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them, but I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you wanna know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button, actually smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.